8 most overpaid NBA players ever. Before we start, I'd like you to hit that red subscribe button so that you never miss out on any of our videos. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to NBA Hub. The NBA may be a star-driven league, but its financial structure ensures that building a roster requires more than identifying talent. It's not just about finding the right player, it's about finding the right player at the right price. With team values continuing to climb, owners can't afford to pay an underachieving player. The real pain is the opportunity cost. What could you have gotten for that money instead? How could you have beefed up your roster? It's no surprise then that teams continue to search for new inefficiencies and measures of value in a statistical revolution. With that in mind, here are eight of the most overpaid NBA players. Number one, Chris Paul. Chris Paul is a guy I love. Yeah. He is not well liked by players. Paul is having a reasonably productive season with 9.1 wins produced, but he has tied for 45th in the league despite playing only 58 games. But his win shares and VORP wins figures are easily career lows and noticeably down from the 10.2 and 11.6 he posted last year when he also played 58 games. If he could stay healthy, this contract wouldn't look so bad, but he still has two years to go, plus a player option for 2021 at $44,211,146. But he's missed 69 games across the last three seasons. Can the Rockets really count on having him for a full season? Why don't guys like him? People think he's a politician. Okay. No, people don't trust politicians. <laughs> Number two, Wesley Matthews. Matthews' current contract might not look so bad. He counts 512,000 against the Pacers cap, but that's only because he was waived by the Knicks in February. For this analysis, we combined his two cap figures as well as his on-court production across three stops this season. Number three, Jim McLovane. This might not look like a big number considering what we've been seeing in this free agency, but back in the 90s, this was a crazy amount of money. McLovane achieved a poor 2.3 points and 2.9 rebounds before signing, which makes this signing more of a mystery, possibly one of the reasons Seattle isn't a team anymore. Number 4. Allen Houston Before Houston signed this contract, he was the man in New York. However, it's not even that things didn't go well for him, it's more how it backfired for the team. Because of his contract, the Knicks couldn't really go out and get other players, which caused a lot of losing, and Houston was blamed for it. Number 5. Jerome James Jerome James has to be the biggest mistake in NBA history. He went from playing 15 minutes a game with the Seattle Supersonics to getting a contract from the Knicks for $30 million. Why, you might ask? Because he had one, and I mean one, final good playoff game. So he gets $30 million despite the fact that he could not even take me one-on-one. -on -one. Wow. Number 6. Vladimir Radmanovic Vlad is another player who never actually accomplished anything and yet he signed a $35 million contract with the Lakers. You might ask, why do they pay him? that much money. The answer is to make sure the Clippers couldn't have him. Number 7. Ben Wallace Now, this one stumps me. Why would anybody conceivably give Wallace a $60 million contract when his career stat line is 1 point, 10 boards, and 3 blocks? What could he actually do? He won an NBA title, but it had nothing to do with him. He went undrafted for a reason. He's not good. Just another case of general managers screwing over their fans. Number 8. Kmart Albeit Cannon Martin was a good player early in his career, but you don't give up 3 first round picks and 75 million dollars to a player with 10 knee surgeries in his past. If you watch him play now, he can barely run nevertheless jump, but the Nuggets had to make a splash. The only thing splashing now is their salary cap woe is trying not to drown. Number 9. Ryan Anderson The Rockets' pivot towards defense last year meant that the team pivoted away from Anderson, who was shipped to Phoenix in the offseason. Anderson maintains his two best assets. He is tall and he can shoot, but he has always had an aversion to rebounding and he will be paid $20.4 million, 40th in the NBA by the Suns. Number 10. Tim Hardaway Jr. The Mavericks took on Hardaway's pricey contract as a cost of acquiring Kristaps Porzingis. On top of his $17 million base salary, he earned $1.8 million when the Knicks dealt him as a result of a trade kicker. Hardaway averaged a career-high 18.1 points this season, but he didn't get there particularly efficiently, shooting .393 from the field and .340 from three. With another year on the deal and the player option for 2020, he won't be coming off Dallas's books as soon as the team might like. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit like if you did and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on any of our videos in the future. Also, watch the two videos that are currently on your screen because I'm sure you'll love them. With that, we'll see you in the next video.